If you're like me and for years you've struggled with mixing low end, the kick isn't punchy enough, the bass is overwhelming, or maybe it's just really muddy and weak. Well, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to solve all those problems with some very simple techniques that are gonna save you hours of time and tons of mixing headaches. Hey everybody, welcome to Boombox, the home of collaboration with me, Fabio from Noise. Before we get to mixing head banging bass, if you're someone who uses Dropbox, Google Drive, SoundCloud, and we transfer, well, guess what? I've got a solution for you that puts all of those into one and it's designed for musicians by musicians. Boombox.io is a place where you can store and share your files. You can choose what level of access the people you're sending it to get. So you can make sure your precious music is secure and safe. And if you want a little bit of feedback, you can leave timestamp text and voice notes on audio files. Perhaps you're getting ready for a release and you want to send off a body of work. Well, don't worry, we got you. Boombox also has a playlist feature where you can compile your favorite tracks and then share them with managers, labels, a and and so on. And don't forget, if you're looking for a collaborator to take your music to the next level, well, we have the Artist Network page. Here you can create a profile and search for other musicians and engineers. It's completely free to sign up and you get four gigabytes of storage just to get you going. Link is in the description below. Don't forget to check it out. One of the reasons bass and kick are so difficult to mix is because they both have a lot of low frequencies. Low frequencies equals a lot of energy. We also know that low frequencies are important, especially if you're making club or dance music, because this is what people tend to go to those shows for. There's nothing quite like feeling the rumbling and vibrations of bass through your body as you're enjoying your favorite artist. I'm gonna start by playing you the demo that the artist sent and flick to the finished mix that I have done. I want you to focus on the kick and bass and where they sit in the mix. Big thanks to Demi, by the way, for letting us use this track. Now, in the demo, which is heavily compressed and limited, everything sounds very squashed. In my mix, what I wanted to do was create a little bit more space, especially for the kick and bass. Now, I'm not gonna show you how to do low cuts or even how to sidechain. We're gonna take a look at a more in-detail process on how to get your kick and bass working together. Let's start with the kick. Now, firstly, I didn't actually feel that the kick had enough low end. I'm using this Pultec EQ, which is a tube EQ. It sounds very smooth and very musical. Now I'm not looking to add punch to the kick, and this is why I chose this EQ. Because it's smooth, it's not trying to accentuate the transient as much as a digital EQ or another analog EQ such as an API. Now notice how I'm boosting, I'm also attenuating, which means cutting. And on the pull tech, what this means is you're boosting with a shelf and then you end up attenuating just above it. So you can boost the low end, but you don't end up adding mud or you can take some of that mud out. I am actually also attenuating at 10,000 hertz and that's because I don't like the clickiness on the kick. So I'm basically doing this to soften and take off a little bit of the edge. Listen out to the high frequencies of the kick as well as the low frequencies whilst I play it back. I'm taking some of the presence out of the kick and adding low end. Next, I'm cleaning up some of that low end with a low cut at 35 hertz and another boost at 50 just to accentuate some of the punch. A 
As far as my kit goes, that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the base. I'm a big fan of using limiters for clean and transparent compression because that's essentially what a limiter is. Limiters help deal with the peaks. The FabFilter Pro L2 is particularly good at that, especially in transparent mode with look ahead turned all the way up. Feel free to pause the video and copy these settings. These are my go-to settings for base compression with a limiter. And all I'm looking to do here is control some of the peaks in the sub base. Now, as you can hear, there's a big punch every time the bass plays. It's actually a kick with a sub underneath it. The problem is I already have a kick. So I'm dealing with these peaks very aggressively and I'm essentially trying to get rid of the kick from the sub. With it in, it's gonna add too much punch to the kick, which is going to result in a lot of energy in the low end. And that's also gonna mean that I'm not gonna be able to master my track as loud, which I'm gonna need for a track in the start. It's gonna need to be big and as loud as possible for that EDM sound. Now, next up, we're using Sausage Fatner. And I learned this trick from Juice World and Machine Gun Kelly's producer. I actually did a video with him, if you wanna check that out, called Plugin with the Pros, where he takes me through a bunch of his plugins and how he uses uses them in his production. Now, the reason I'm using this with a gain utility plugin is because this does add a lot of volume. I believe that this is actually an input gain, not an output gain. So you can drive into the sausage fattener, but I wanted to be able to take the volume down afterwards. Otherwise, I'm just hearing a louder signal. Of course, it's gonna sound better. What's cool about the sausage fattener is that it's a saturator. It's gonna absorb even more of that kick transient and it's gonna add harmonics, which means that it's going to add frequencies to different areas of the bass, making it sound thicker. Now I'm being quite subtle with this, but you can drive the fatness to your taste. Let's try it out. You see where I'm going with this. Next, I'm cleaning up the bass with a Pro-Q3. I'm using this in a linear phase so that when I do the low cut, I'm not changing the phase and increasing the volume. You'll see the setting down here. I've also got a high cut. The high cut is just helping take away any edge from the high end. Sometimes when you add saturation, it increases the harmonics and the higher frequencies. Because this mix is so rich in sounds, I wanna make sure that I'm carving out enough space for them. Here, What's interesting is that I'm actually using the FabFilter Pro-Q3 with the internal sidechain. Now, I have actually made a video on this up here, so make sure you go check that out to understand how to use the sidechain in the FabFilter Pro-Q3 in more detail. Here's what it sounds like with and without the EQ. And finally, I'm sidechaining the bass to the kick with this compressor here. What's different about the way I've set this up is I'm actually only allowing the compressor to be triggered by the high end of the kick that I'm feeding in. So I'm feeding in the kick via here. I've turned my sidechain on, so it's reacting to the external signal, but it's only reacting to the high frequencies of the kick. Why is that? Well, the high frequencies of the kick are just a click, so it's much tighter and shorter compared to the low end, which is bigger and longer. This means that I can get a much faster reacting compressor and much tighter and shorter sidechain ducking. Notice what happens when I turn the high pass filter off. The side chain feels a lot more out of control and lacks the speed that I'm after when it's ducking the volume out of the way for the kick. Now, although all those steps are really important to making sure the kick sounds good and the bass sounds good, this is where the magic happens for me. So we make sure that we set a ceiling and we're not 
crossing it. By using these settings here as well, which are incredibly transparent, there isn't going to be a sonic difference, but what we are gonna have is control over the peak level of our kick and bass playing together. Before we get onto the next step, we need to balance the kick and bass. What volume should they sit at? Now, I like to do this by ear. I don't like to focus too much on meters, and it's a very, very simple trick, to be honest. Bring your bass channel all the way down in volume. We're gonna increase it gradually in volume, but we're not listening to the bass. Listen to the kick as you increase the bass in volume. When the kick starts to disappear or feel compromised, that's when you need to pull the bass down. You'll notice that there's a point where the kick feels overwhelmed, the bass is too loud, and it loses focus. That's the point at which you should pull back. I do also recommend making a check on headphones as well as your monitors, or just having some sort of second reference that's going to allow you to check how it sounds on different systems. Now, all these steps are really important to making sure that your kick and bass sit properly together, but this, for me, is where the magic happens. You want to start by grouping your kick and bass, so sending them to the same channel. This is also known as busing. When I solo this group, you'll notice my kick and bass play together. Next, solo that kick, add a limiter, and you want to increase the gain on the limiter until you start to see a tiny bit of gain reduction and then back off. This limiter is also set at one to one, which means that as I increase the gain, it's decreasing the output, which means that I'm not adding any volume. Now the intention here is not to limit the kick, but when the kick and bass are playing together, they increase in amplitude. So we're controlling the amplitude or the volume of them playing at the same time. And by setting this ceiling, now that we know they're balanced, it means that the peak level of the two playing together is not going to be so high that when it comes to mastering later on down the line, we can feel safe about the fact that our kick and bass are controlled, which will result in a louder sounding track. I also urge you to use a high quality limiter that is transparent at this point. The FabFilter Pro L2 is fantastic. If you don't have access to this, find something that is equally transparent because we're not trying to change the tone or the sonic quality of the two when they're playing together. Now notice when I play the bass and the kick in the group that the limiter will start to be triggered. So even if you don't do all the steps before, that is a really simple way of controlling the two together in one group or bus. Don't forget that all these videos are possible because of Boombox. Link is in the description below and you can sign up today and get four gigabytes for free and access to almost all of the features. Timestamp feedback as text or voice notes, playlists to share with managers, labels, all your friends and family, an artist network where you can find your next collaborator. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Fabio from Noise. We're here at Boombox, the home of collaboration. It's been a pleasure as always, and I'll see you very soon. Peace.